everybody, Jim Messina here once again, Vintage Drums Talk. We're here at the Rebeats Cafe at the 2014 Custom and Vintage Drum Show in Chicago. And I'm here with my good, good buddy, Mark Cooper from Cooper's Vintage Drums. Now, Mark and I have been doing some spots here. We've been talking year for years about vintage drums at this show. And we want to do a little special thing here that, that uh, look, takes a look at Mark's collection. Some things that we've talked about before and some things that you haven't seen with some new facts about uh, Mark's vintage drums. So the first thing we're going to take a look at, Mark, let's show them what we've got here. Okay, this is a 1929 Slingerland Artist model equipped with a tone flange. And it's finished in an extremely rare rose pearl finish okay now is there uh i think we were talking earlier about you know uh, the confusion between the rose pearl and what was it coral uh, coral pearl yeah, yeah that was in an earlier segment but sometimes people confuse that but this is genuine rose pearl how rare is that color it's extremely rare i've only seen uh i only know of like two or three in existence huh and some people confuse it with lavender pearl too because it can fade to a uh -huh. lavender-ish color. And now I'm seeing, uh, we have a little bit of a close-up here, and I was asked this question earlier today. If you folks can see this picture, you'll see, it looks like there's a bit of what, a mesh behind this? Yeah, for, uh, in the early, the earlier uh, years of Slingerland, they, they used a cloth backing, uh -huh. which, which helped the glue adhere to the shell, the, the glue adhere to the shell better. Uh-huh. It's a real pretty drum. Now, what did this look like when you got it? It wasn't always in this shape, was it? Well, what we're looking at right here is a, a, a an imitation finish. Ah, now there's a good example, see? Now, what we were just looking at prior to this was the real finish. It was, it was the real deal, right? And what have we got here? Well, a friend of mine named Dave Brown uh, uh, from England, a collector, Dave Brown, a fellow yes. collector, uh, he sent me a shell that was finished in uh, rose pearl, but it was horribly, uh, it was falling off, it was destroyed, and so I, I spent hours and hours removing this old finish that was really glued and stuck on there, and I happened to come across a Japanese floor tom that was wrapped in a finish it looks so much like the original rose pearl that I thought aha I think I'll see if I can put this on the drum I couldn't seem to figure out how to make it work so I sent it to my friend Jack Lawton who's a master oh of there's a name <laughs> uh, he's done a couple of different weird things for you yeah he's, he has this many, is one many of them. skills yes I think he did a tack head tom for you right? didn't he yes he did a sea green pearl tack tom head. not easy to do no it's really uh, difficult he I, did such a beautiful job of the two yeah. Uh, so I sent this drum to him, and I said, do what you can with it, see if you can make it work. Because of all the different holes that were in it, when I took it off the floor tom, I couldn't seem to find a way to line it up where the holes weren't showing. But he worked his magic on it, found a way to get it on there, and just did an incredible job on it. it looks terrific. And when he was done, I had all period correct pieces, hardware pieces, in my, in, in my collection of parts, and I was able to put it back and make a... Uh, kind of a recreated version of I the see. original drum. Well, this is beautiful. I mean, these parts from your stash, uh, they're all matching. They seem to match, right? Yes. Is this from yeah. all from one drum? or uh, No, it was actually from pieces I picked up over the years from different drums, but all the, you know, the same correct parts. So what, what era is this drum again? 1929 to 1930. Uh -huh. 31 probably the latest. And you have catalogs, uh, I understand? To, yes, so you're looking at uh, To a, illustrate uh, that. This is a 1930 uh, catalog showing the rose pearl bass drum and snare drum. And what do we have? Slingerland Art Gold there, right? Yes. That's On the lower snare yes. drum there? In the, in the picture, that's uh, the artist's rendition of Art Gold. And here you see it without the Art Gold, which is uh, either chrome or nickel plating. And by the way, 1929 was the first year for uh, chromium plating uh, for drum companies to use. Huge plus in those days. Well, this drum, I mean, uh, this is still in your possession? Yes. That's for sale? Good. Yes. Huh. You hear that, folks? We're at the show. This particular drum we're talking about is for sale, but this is 
Is this the one this we're talking the, about? The other this one. This is the original. It's this hard is to, the original. It's hard to tell, isn't it? I know. I'm, I'm, you're, I'm getting confused here. I tricked the experts. <laughs> this picture here uh, with the green background—that's the original, authentic rose pearl that I found about five years ago. Uh huh. And it now resides in the incredible Mike Curato collection. Gosh, what an obscure name in the vintage drum Jerry, community. Mark, are you familiar with him? Gosh. Well, Mike Carano, of course, you know, you've sold a lot of drums to Mike. You've been a, a real provider for, for fine pieces for Mike. Uh, it's funny with Mark. I'll ask Mark, i say, Mark, what's in your collection, actually? And you'd be surprised. I mean, with the knowledge that you have, uh, you, you, you're able to let things go to people like Mike Carano. And we had a little discussion about that with Bunny Carlos uh, as to why would you get rid of a triumphal, you know, a gold triumphal or, you know, a peacock pearl drum? Because he says it's time to let it go, but he makes sure it goes to the right person. Same thing here. You're dealing with Mike Carano and other high level collectors right. uh, because you have, seem to have an ethic about the things that you uh, deal because. You're a collector, but you're also a provider, a dealer of fine vintage Some call drums. Call me a pusher. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> this is an obsession, you guys, and you got to be careful because you could become addicted. And Mark Cooper would gladly be your pusher for I'll you. I'll be out on the street corner. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what but a it's fantastic nice to, drum! It's nice to be able to send a drum like that to a guy like Mike Curata because I know where it's going. It's going to the best home it could be. He, right. he doesn't. When he gets them, they stay in his collection. They don't. Yeah. They don't disappear. He calls himself an end user. Right. I mean, that's what right. he's doing. He's basically building a museum, and uh, you're happy to to give him that, uh, that that those pieces to go in that museum. Mark, you're an incredible guy, incredible collector, and a good friend of mine. Folks, check out Cooper's Vintage Drums, okay? And you're going to see some real history. Mark has taken the time. He gives a lot of minutiae, a lot of information from catalogs. He's the go-to guy for me when I want to know about Slingerland, uh, certain, certain pieces of hardware. It's on his site. Plus, Mark, you are also an author. Why don't you tell us about some of the articles you've written? Yeah, I've written uh, close to 10 articles for Modern Drummer Magazine, uh, uh -huh. specifically on vintage vintage drums. On, uh, I have My next article is coming out in the July issue, uh -huh. which I think it actually hits the stands in late May. Just missed it by a few days uh -huh. having it here. Uh, it's on radio, the history of Radio King drums. History of Radio King drums. Look for that article. Mark Cooper, great collector, author, dealer, <laughs> and a good friend of mine, I'll tell you. Jim Messina, Vintage Drums Talk, right here at the 2014 Vintage and Custom Chicago Drum Show from the Rebeats Cafe. We'll see you friends later. Take care. Bye-bye.